Most of us are taught to avoid failure and loss at all costs. Failing and losing are embarrassing and shameful, therefore we should avoid them. And there is no fault in thinking that way. In fact, this is a common sense that we shouldn't do what we know that would lead us to failure. And this is a typical human behavior that whenever we play any type of game, we play it seriously. And we want to win so badly, even though in the back of our mind we know this is a game, but we still end up forgetting that it's a game, and we want to win so badly. But some people take it to the extreme by trying to avoid failure and loss completely and try to become perfect human being. That is equally bad as going to the extreme, to the other side, into chaos. Because if you try to become too perfect, even the smallest dirt, wrinkle, or failure becomes harmful to your existence. You see, we need risk and chaos sometimes. That's how we learn new things, and that's how we develop. And I thought of two characters whom I think illustrated this idea with their story and their character development. And in this video, I'll go over each character and break down how they illustrated this idea. Starting with Marufuji Ryo, he is a character from our childhood nostalgia Yu-Gi-Oh GX. This goes way back. I really liked the original series Yu-Gi-Oh Dual Monsters, and GX didn't really click for me. But there were some great plot devices and character developments which I still remember to this day. One of them was Marufuji Ryo, aka Zane Truesdale's character development. For what I'm going to talk about in this video, it's based on the original Japanese version, because in English dub version, Ryo's character is different, and he was definitely not a respectable character. Not only Ryo's character, but dub changed a lot in the story that actually made the story worse. So throughout this video, I'll use his Japanese name, Ryo. But the segments of the anime I use in this videos are actually from the dub version, because I couldn't find the original version episodes. Ryo was perfect in every way. He excelled all subjects and always scored top at the Duel Academia each year. He got the looks and charisma like no other students his age have, never lost in a duel, and hence earned himself the name Kaiser, meaning the Emperor. Typically, having all these qualities would result one to develop arrogance and cockiness. But Ryo didn't even have that. He was wise, never underestimated his opponents, and always dueled them fair and square. So we can't think of any wrinkle or dirt in his character. And what's more perfect is that he was even smart enough to be aware that his perfection would be his limit. But he didn't know, unfortunately, something worse was waiting right around the corner. When he graduated, things started to go downhill. As he stepped into the real world, he had to become more perfect. Because in the real world, you got more at stake. He was excelling even outside his school, and his reputation grew, and he became internationally known. Then he had to duel with Ed Phoenix, his nemesis. After his dominance and winning streak in pro-level duels, he still wasn't disrespectful and cocky towards his opponents. Likewise, he didn't underestimate Ed, and he fought against him with his full strength. But to everyone's amazement, he lost. The perfect man with no drop of black ink in his records, it's because he was perfect, the taste of loss was bitter, and his loss got into his deep psyche, and he had a losing streak since then. Eventually, his title as a Kaiser was revoked, and people started to make fun of him, who once was the Emperor, now just a loser. This made it even worse for him, eventually this caused him to go down the spiral of depression. Then he gets into the underground dueling world, where every life point you lose will lead you to excruciating pain. And there he undergoes a change. He realized that his perfection to respect his opponent and to care for his cards and to always maintain this image of a perfect man was holding him back. 
and there he broke his limit and dived into chaos and entered the Hell Kaiser. He climbed up to the top in the underground dueling world and reclaimed his throne. But the cost was his physical health due to excessive voltage which he has been receiving through the battles in the underground dueling world and also irrecoverable trauma from all those pain. But later in the series he eventually comes back to join the good guys and actually teaches the main character Judai or Jaden in the English dub version. The lesson was to grow up. The dueling world is not always for fun. Eventually in the real world you will have to face the reality and the reality is cruel. And the second character I chose is Light Yagami. We can sum up the whole reason he became Kira with just two words, God Complex and Boredom, and both are connected to his perfection. Light was a straight A student, that his high school subjects were too easy to the point that it was pretty much a leisure activity for him. Like Ryo, he was also very good looking and charismatic. When a person becomes too smart and too perfect, he starts to become isolated and alienated if he doesn't have the right heart. He realized that everyone around him and the whole society is just full of useless people that are better off not existing. He wanted perfect world, perfect in his own standards, and he wanted to become the god of their world. Do you remember the scene where Light was getting provoked by the fake L on a TV? The real L was just guest shooting over the cities of Japan by broadcasting fake L's announcement on each city. Because at the time L had suspected that Kira could be in Japan, there had been a mysterious death by a heart attack reported only in Japan. But Light without his usual skeptical and careful mind just took this provocation personally. If you're so perfect and some guy starts to negate everything you believe in and tries to interfere with the creation of your perfect world, what would you do? You get triggered and you act emotionally. That's exactly what Light did and he kills the imposter L and that pretty much put a target on his head. Imagine how hard it would have been if L couldn't pin that Kira was in a specific region of Japan. If he couldn't confirm that Kira was even in Japan, it would have been hard. It would at least take some more effort, but Light actually made it easier for L. And his loss to Nier at the end of the series was nothing new. And by the way, I made a video before on how Light lost. If you go down in the description, you'll find the link for it. But now I'll only point out how his loss was inevitable, but he could have turned it around if it wasn't for his God complex and perfectionism, and if he didn't take it too emotionally. So in his final scene, Light was so assured that his plan was perfect, that he was itching to declare his victory. He was barely holding his compulsion to just burst out laughing like a maniac. He said, near I won before even confirming that he actually succeeded. Basically, this reveal was unnecessary. If he hadn't done this, he could have handled his loss like how he did with L. By saying he knows who Mikami is, knows who has been doing the killing, but he was being controlled by Kira all this time. And Nier, of course, is not an idiot and he would still be skeptical about this claim, but it would at least buy Light some time. Using this time, Light could have figured it out how to escape or maybe plot his next move, but he didn't. He just took it emotionally because, he, because of his perfection, because of his ego. Instead of doing that, instead of handling it the light way, he handled it the Kira way and he went on doing this mental breakdown shenanigans and all this drama, which was unnecessary. What L said was true, Kira hates losing. And this is related to Light being a perfect guy from the start. Light always had the upper hand in life due to his natural talent, but this was also his handicap. And at his final moment, it wasn't Light talking anymore, it was just Kira. 